So it's been exciting to, uh, to visit and see friends and collaborators. So I'm excited to be back for a visit. Um, I apologize for the brain dump. I'll just talk about a couple things that, um, that have been interesting from our group. There's, there's been a lot of promise, and people have spoken of that promise for personalized medicine, precision medicine. Um, we heard about it at the State of the Union. And the technology exists, and it's being used every day by us, by folks at other universities. But there's, there's a barrier to taking genomics from where it is here and bringing out to the, to the clinic, uh, to the bedside, um, even, even, to, uh, even to kind of uh, high-throughput diagnostic labs, like, for example, Myriad. And so I've been very interested in, in the discussion of how to standardize and how to benchmark and understand the performance of, uh, of sequencing, um, of how we do genetic analysis, both so that we can standardize it across collaborating groups, and, and everyone here obviously is on board with the idea of team science to drive really big discovery in, uh, in, in medicine and in genetics, and also figuring out how to lower the barrier for entry for others to join into the space. And so just a couple of things that we've been working on um, one that I like to highlight, um, I have, uh, much like Skip does, I have a, I have a very strong fascination with, uh, with short tandem repeats um, for a whole number of reasons. And, and they are very hard to characterize from genomes. And so my group has done a lot of work trying to figure out the best way, not just to identify and genotype uh, STRs in, in various genomes, but also how to set benchmarks and performance metrics to know that we're actually generating data that's suitable um, to pull that kind of information from. And so we've had a very lengthy and I would say very profitable and rewarding uh, collaboration with the Thousand Genomes Project where um, we convinced the Thousand Genomes Project they're about to publish their last paper. Um, they're going to include STR data, which for me is a thrill. It's been small indels and SNPs to date. There's a paper that I'm highlighting here. It was uh, published in Genome Research in collaboration with Jan of Erwitz's group. Um, that actually is an exhaustive catalog of all the STRs we were able to find in the Thousand Genomes data. And this data is already being used now in Genome in a Bottle, uh, in the Global Alliance, which you guys may have heard of, which is like the new meta Thousand Genomes project that's even more international. And so, so I'm very excited to have participated in that. Um, another trajectory is kind of coming back to lowering the barrier of entry so everyone can get into genomics. You buy that MySeq that's finally affordable if you have a big budget. And, um, and, and the data comes off the machine, and what do you do with it? And so we've built some tools. I couldn't find an exciting screenshot to share with you guys, but if you search on Google for GCAT, G-C-A-T, you'll find it. It's a, it's, a, it's a free online platform that we built. It allows you to download raw Illumina data and ion torrent data, but our focus is on Illumina. And, and you can take it, run it using your lab's secret tools, run it using open source tools, um, download a free trial of some company X's tools and run a uh, variant calling or mapping through that data and then you can upload the results right back to the website and you get an instant report that shows you how you've performed against a number of metrics. Metrics that, for example, look to see that you're capturing the full spectrum of indels, not just insertions or deletions. Um, you know, SNPs that, that obey the kind of TITV ratio you'd expect. And also a, um, a gold standard kind of list of calls that we've curated um, as part of the Genome in a Bottle project with uh, 14 different, I think, sequencing uh, runs across several platforms and universities across the world. Um, and so, and that's, that's this uh, most bottom paper right here. This was the call set that we built. And so, so what this allows you to do is kind of see where you perform or the tools that you're using where they perform. And it gives you a starting point to then decide how to optimize or how to build new tools that will be able to further improve, um, you know, the specificity or accuracy or sensitivity of, um, of, of what you're doing. And, and it's an interesting problem because there probably isn't one set of tools or one set of metrics that will be the final way that you do sequencing. If you're involved in carrier screening, which, which I think is going to be the next big um, kind of killer app of genomics for the public, then, then you're, you don't really care about false positive rate, but in fact you're extremely concerned about sensitivity. You don't want to miss that one variant that might underlie uh, you know, a disorder that you might pass on to your child. On the other hand, if you're doing something kind of in the cancer space, and, um, and you're looking to identify what uh, pathway was mutated, then false positive rate's really important if you highlight all the pathways and you haven't really provided any value for the physician. So, um, so yeah, I, I, guess, I guess to summarize, um, we, we've been very excited to build these tools, not just build them, but make them open and accessible for anyone. We welcome industry folks, academic folks, citizen scientists, everyone in between to use it. The data can be reused for any purpose you want. In fact, there's a couple of folks that have now taken 
Um, we allow you to share the benchmarks and the reports of GCAT. You can generate images for your papers. You can export it to like blog posts and social media. And there are a number of companies now that are using these figures in their white papers. There are, believe it or not, academics that have uh, put, uh, put these figures into their manuscripts. And so it's exciting, because it's not just providing a way for us to all discuss, but, but it's actually being utilized um, and, and hopefully benefiting folks. So, so thanks. <laughs>